Hello, my fellow geeks. I'm Kristen Nettapack, and this is Science Fiction TV. Welcome to another edition of your weekly sci-fi show. This week, we're going to talk about a comic book milestone, the latest with the PlayStation Network hack attack, Portal 2, a little steampunk love, and Doctor Who fashion. But before we get into all that, let's start with one of my favorite topics, Battlestar Galactica. Frackin' A! We've been seriously jonesing for some BSG stuff around Casa de Science Fiction. Um, that would be here. And finally, our dreams came true. Our intrepid geek gal, Christine Donatello, gave us the scoop on a documentary, or should I say fanumentary, that premiered at the Sci-Fi London Film Festival called We Are the Cylons. As one Wired reporter observed, BSG fans can be quite obsessive about their beloved show. As if we didn't know that, right? The documentary will debut in the U.S. in Baltimore this July. And you can read Christine's report and get the link to the trailer on our website. Speaking of BSG, I believe Rob told me that he met Chief Aaron Douglas. And apparently, he sent Amy Radcliffe and I a message just for us. Hmm. Hey, Amy and Kristen, it's Aaron Douglas from Battlestar Galactica. I flew all the way to Florida to see you, and you didn't show up. Chief, uh, that's how you want to roll? All right, you, me, hanger four, buddy, let's do this. And while I'm getting warmed up to kick some toaster butt, we have a Twitter contest for you guys. Here's what you need to do. Tweet the answer to the following question between now and Saturday at noon Pacific Standard Time, and you'll be entered to win an autographed picture of Chief. Ready for the question? Here it is. Callie, Chief's dearly departed, was blown into space. Was it from an airlock or a launch tube? Simply tweet airlock or launch tube to science fiction and you'll be entered to win. So yeah, now I'm about to uh, head over there and teach some skin job a lesson. I'll be right back. Last week, we had a fan request for a recap of Portal 2. Well, you asked for it, and here it is. Geekatron Brian Tudor picked up the game and took it for a spin, so to speak. He tells us that there are a lot of similarities between the original Portal and this version, which Brian played on the PS3. The premise is that after the events of the first game, you awaken from a stasis to find the world in ruins. From there, you're given instructions on where to find your Portal guns. The environment is completely run down, making the levels a huge challenge. Challenge. And in addition to integrating with the Steam Engine, they've also added co-op online play to the game. But unfortunately, that's as far as Brian got before the PlayStation Network went down. <laughs> Technology. Always failing when you're having the most fun. Am I right? But all in all, Brian says Portal 2 is a winner and deserves to be added to your collection. So hey, that's good news. Speaking of the PlayStation Network, you know it was hacked, right? Sony finally admitted that the account information for 77 million users was accessed, which might have included credit card data. But the bigger issue here is your password. So if you use the, the same email password combo for other sites that you use for the PlayStation Network, hit pause right now and go change your other passwords. Seriously. Right now. On a happier note, one person who knows how to keep his technology in check is my favorite Time Lord, Doctor Who. In Amy's latest column, she's gone off fashionista on the Doctor Who's assistants and pulled together a profile of them over the years. Unlike the good Doctor who doesn't change his outfits, even though he does change bodies, his assistants must keep a nicely packed suitcase in the TARDIS because let's face it, they always look fashionable, right? But as Amy says, that's the show's way of differentiating the Doctor from a regular old human. Fair point. However, a nice pair of dark jeans would be bloody hot. I'm just saying. So we have a couple of not-to-be-missed exclusives on the site from Christine Donatello, including her latest review called Camelot vs. Game of Thrones, where she compares the two shows and picks her favorite. Brace yourself, it was Camelot. Really? But Christine also interviewed Bruce Rosenbaum, the curator of the Jules Verne Gallery in New England, to chat about the very cool steampunk pieces and the exhibit. Now, those are two hot items to check out, and I'm going to say right now, me and you, we agree on steampunk, girl. 
Last but not least, let's bring this home with comics. Brian reviewed Transformers Dark of the Moon Foundation number one. Now this is the prequel comic to the summer's upcoming uh, giant killer robots that turn into other stuff fest. Yeah, that sounds a lot better than Oktoberfest, doesn't it? Uh, any hoots. Transformers Dark of the Moon Foundation is a four book series that tells the behind the scenes story of the Cybertron. Now there's a second series called Transformers Dark of the Moon Rising Storm which addresses the direct threat covered in the movie and how the new players set the stage for the film's climax. Foundation 1, 2, and 3 and Rising Storm 1, 2, and 3 are now available in stores right frackin' now. Uh, yeah, for the record, Cylons would kick Transformer butts any day. Again, just saying. From big robots to big releases, Action Comics released issue number 900 this week, and Superman made his return to the series of his birth just for the event. This is a rich 96-page book with a great conclusion to one story and an arc into a new one. There's also a series of artist vignettes by some of the best in the business, and if that wasn't enough, there's a two-page spread that pays homage to the different artists that have drawn the Man of Steel over the decades. How awesome is that? I think it's safe to say that this is a great issue to own. Maybe pick up two. One to save, one to enjoy. And maybe three. Give one to me. In addition to that, we have the continuing saga of War of the Green Lanterns, where Guy Gardner, who is now a Red Lantern, must face the consequences of his actions in the previous two books. Justice League Generation Lost has a shocking end in a supersized issue, and a new age for Thor has begun with Mighty Thor, as writer Matt Fraction and artist Olivier Coipel return to the helm for God of Thunder. The story of the book sets the stage for the return of world eater Galactus. So that's it for this week, guys. Don't don't forget to tweet airlock or launch tube to at science fiction on Twitter by Saturday at noon Pacific Standard Time for your chance to win an autographed picture of Aaron Douglas, aka Chief from Battlestar Galactica. And while you're at it, follow us on Twitter and stay in the loop. We're always talking about super geek things. You can also find our page on Facebook at science fiction and big thanks once again to our geeks in residence, Amy, Brian, and Christine. I'm Kristen Nettopack and I'll see you guys next week on Science Fiction TV from sciencefiction.com.